I am YouTuber FZappa20 and you are about to watch a video by the Jammin' Music Man, a guy that I once described as the nicest dude on the internet. I'm sticking to that statement. You'll see it in the videos here. He brings a sincere enthusiasm on every subject he hits. Music, wrestling, movies, whatever it is. His videos are fun like you're about to see right now. What's up guys, it's me Jammin' Music Man and welcome to my all new album review video today. That's right, it's been a while since I've done an album review here on my channel, but today I'm going to be reviewing Minor Threat's first demo tape. Oh yes, I'm a big Minor Threat fan and today I'm just going to give you the track listings, the feel of the album and whether or not I recommend you picking it up or not. But first off, let's talk about... Or let's just give a brief little history of just who were Minor Threat. Minor Threat were one of those leading hardcore bands that came out in the early 80s. And when I mean hardcore punk bands, I mean bands like Bad Brains, Black Flag, Circle Jerks, Dead Kennedys. Basically, the whole hardcore punk scene was really... It really started in like 79 and 80, and basically it was punk rock that was against the whole 70s original punk rock, like the Ramones and the Sex Pistols, and a lot of these bands, the hardcore punk bands like Bad Brains and My Threat, they were a lot more raw, a lot more aggressive, a lot more pissed off than, you know, the late 70s punk bands. And there is a difference, and a lot of people think that punk rock died in the 80s, and, you know, that's not necessarily true. Punk rock was still going in the 80s. It's just that, you know, there was a backlash against, you know, the Sex Pistols and the Ramones and all that. And, you know, then New Wave kind of became, you know, punk in disguise, New Wave was a little bit more uh, accessible to the mainstream public than, you know, punk rock. I mean, the hardcore punk like Minor Threat and all those bands, you know, they were against all that. They were just about chaos, anarchy, and getting their point across in like uh, a minute and 12 seconds. And, uh, you know, Minor Threat, one of those legendary bands, like I said, and, uh, you know, it was started by this guy right here, the singer of the band, Ian McKay. And Ian McKay is a punk rock legend. Just to give you a brief little history of Ian McKay, Ian McKay and Henry Rollins, uh, they were in a punk band called the Teen Idols. And the Teen Idols were a short-lived punk band that opened up for, like, Bad Brains. And they played a lot of, like, underground punk clubs and house parties. And then Henry Rollins would later go on to, uh, you know, join Black Flag and Ian McKay. You know, he later started Minor Threat. And, you know, Ian McKay, you know, he started Discord Records, which was a record label for all the hardcore punk bands. And then Ian McKay would later go on to be in another legendary underground band called Fugazi. And, you know, we'll talk about Fugazi at another day in time. But we're talking about Minor Threat. Minor Threat, for me, is one of my all-time favorite punk bands is because they weren't about sniffing glue and getting fucked up and all that. Minor Threat's music was, it was punk rock with a message. And for those of you who don't know, Minor Threat spearheaded this whole straight-edge movement, okay? The straight-edge movement started with this band right here in the early ages. Basically, straight edge, it's, you know, people who are against drinking, smoking, remaining celibate. Basically, it's, you know, it's a movement that's about, you know, finding your inner strength that, you know, you don't want to drink, you don't want to smoke, you don't want to be like this person. And for people who, all my all my wrestling viewers, you, you know CM Punk, you know, the straight edge uh, superstar, you know. Sam Punk was a definitely a big fan of Minor Threat, and he definitely follows the values of what it means to be straight edge. But that's just a brief little history 
of minor threat. But basically, we're talking about this album right here. This album right here was recorded during the summer of 1981 with the original classic minor threat uh, lineup. And I love the album cover right here. Just the band on a front porch, you know, with a dog. In the early 80s, we're just a, you know, hardcore punk band. Love the album cover. But basically, this album right here is their first demo tape that they recorded. And, uh, you know, it's uh, eight tracks and all. And this album right here, I kid you not, this album is over uh, in, you know, like nine to ten minutes long. Because basically, all these songs right here, some of them don't even last a minute. You know, basically, the probably the longest song on here is maybe like a minute and 15 seconds, maybe. But basically, the total length of this album is 9 to 10 minutes long. I'm not even kidding you. But basically, the eight tracks you get on this first demo tape are all the classic Minor Threat songs that we've, you know, come to know and love. Uh, you know, track number one is Minor Threat by the man Minor Threat. One of their classic songs. Uh, number two, Stand Up. Number three, Seen Red, one of the their most iconic songs of the band. Number four is Bottle Violence. Uh, number five is Small Man, Big Mouth, great track. Number six, Straight Edge. I mean, we could call this song right here the national anthem for the whole Straight Edge movement. And number seven, Guilty of Being White, one of their most controversial songs, uh, you know, but also one of their best songs and the guilty of being white um there's a great documentary that came out like maybe 10 years ago called american hardcore and it's a documentary on all those uh you know early 80s hardcore punk bands and they're interviewing ian mckay or ian mckay whatever you want to call him uh he talks about how, uh, you know, there was like this neo-Nazi leader guy in like Poland who was using, uh, you know, the Guilty of Being White song and he somehow got connected with Ian and he told him that, you know, uh, it is good that you are, you know, standing up for the white man. But basically, you know, Ian McKay, if you pay attention to the, the lyrics of the song, you know, don't blame me for slavery a uh, hundred years before I was born. Basically, you know, it's not a, a, a pro-white song. It's basically, he's just saying in the song, hey, you know, don't blame me for what happened 200 years ago. I'm not a racist or anything like that. But there was a lot of controversy with that song, but like I said, one of their best songs. And um, number eight, I don't want to hear it. But all in all, you get eight tracks. This album right here goes by like that. And, you know, kid you not, it's over in like 10 minutes. But all in all, I love this album right here. And it's a great piece of, you know, history of where the band was going. You know, uh, you know, Minor Threat, they would break up in like the mid-80s and, like I said, Ian McKay, he would later go on to start Fugazi, another legendary, iconic band. But just wanted to get you guys, get a good look at the front cover. And this is the back. Um, let you guys get a good look on the inside. And there you see you get a picture of uh, Henry Rollins. It looks like he's in someone's living room right there. But a uh, great album. Like I said, five-star classic. And you're not going to get this album at your local Walmart, Barnes & Nobles. I actually got this album off uh, the Discord uh, Records website. And like I said, Discord Records was started by Ian McKay, and I believe his brother, and it's still going today. So if you want to pick it up, go check out their website. But all in all, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Jammin' Music Man. Be sure to give this video a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Minor threat, take one, once again. Hey, Don, stop singing along with one bass. A little faster. One bass. Faster. faster.